welcome to Letterboxd Book Club. My name is Claire. And I am Caleb. <laughs> oh, you! I thought you, you froze for a second, but you, was it a pause for anticipation? No, you froze as well. Oh, no. Oh, it's the Wi-Fi. It's gone to shit. But anyway, we're still rolling as far as I'm aware. Okay, cool. And today we'll be discussing What Light by Jay Asher. And it's the start of our Christmas little book haul. Yeah, we're kicking off the holiday season. Yeah. It's so <laughs> exciting. <laughs> All right, we love Christmas. It's Grimma. It's Chrysler. Merry Crisis. Sierra's family runs a Christmas tree farm in Oregon. It's a bucolic setting for a girl to grow up in, except that every year they pack up and move to California to set up their Christmas tree lot for the season. So Sierra lives two lives, her life in Oregon and her life at Christmas, and leaving one always means missing the other, until this particular Christmas when Sierra meets Caleb and one life eclipses the other. By reputation, Caleb is not your perfect guy. Years ago, he made an enormous mistake and has been paying for it ever since. But Sierra sees beyond Caleb's past and becomes determined to help him find forgiveness and maybe redemption. As disapproval, misconceptions and suspicions swirl around them, Caleb and Sierra discover the one thing that transcends all else. True love. Love that. And thoughts, feelings, emotions, Kenzie. I know you have qualms. Very intrigued by. I need a couple of qualms. Um... My cat's being so weird. She's just a baby. She's just a baby. I loved this book. I love this book coming out of House of Night. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, really refreshing, like it isn't it? Perfect... It's refreshing, yeah. I feel like it was a perfect like palette cleanser sort of vibe. Um, yeah, for sure. I thought that it was going to go a different direction and I was scared. But it's just a cute little fun YA love story. Um, one shot sort of vibes. And a stark departure from Jay Asher's other work. <laughs> yeah, for those who are unfamiliar, Jay Asher wrote the 13 Reasons Why books. So, yeah, understandable coming book. into this little Singular. book. It's a little nerve-wracking. Oh, oh book. Oh, I, I just assumed TV, multiple TV, show, TV seasons equates to more books. No, they took it and ran with it. <laughs> and then they destroyed it. <laughs> Sorry, you're cutting in and out a bit, Kenzie. That's just due to my reception. So, like, I'm just trying to yeah, make so it seem a bit natural. <laughs> But yeah, and also, yeah, in Jay Asher fashion, like, there is a, a quite a tragic sort of, like, backstory, bit of, not necessarily darkness about it, but yeah, definitely the mistake that Caleb made is quite, kind of heinous, but anyway, we'll get into that but later. we've all been there. I know, we've all, you know, stumbled under pressure, you lash out, and yeah, we'll, I, I, we're going to have a, probably a very good conversation about that too, because, yeah, the, the whole community sentiment towards him is just completely unfair, in my opinion. But yeah, my thoughts, feelings, emotions. Now that you've just said it's a really good palate cleanser, I completely agree. Like, it was, I don't know, and it was a cute book as well. And I keep forgetting, like, the it's based around 15, 16 year olds. So, like, a lot of drama that occurs in this book yeah, is very, like, menial, hope. teenage bullshit. <laughs> I'd be like, what the fuck? Why are you, like, cracking the shits over this or this? But yeah. But everything is a lot more dramatic when you're a teenager, I guess. Um, but I loved that. When some blowouts happened, it was resolved relatively quickly, which is always nice. And I guess, I don't know, it's a Christmas book. It's about, yeah, forgiving mistakes and community spirit and just doing good, doing the right thing. It's cute. I love it. I would not mind, like, a not Hallmark Christmas movie vibe, but, like, a, a good Christmas movie. You can make a good Christmas movie out of this if you really wanted to. I would like to age them up. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, and I was just going to say there was, it's a pretty short book as well, but I felt at the end, it seemed a kind of little, like it, it ended on a good note, but there's still like a little bit of questions of like, well, what happened? Like, do they actually go to prom or the formal or whatever together? Or do they do this or do they do that? But mm. that's just like another little qualm that I had, but I enjoyed it though. I know when I started reading it, it said my Kindle was like two and a half hours in book or whatever. And I was like, oh, I thought it was going to be like. Five hours or something, like, in book. But, yeah, so it was nice and quick, but it was good. Yeah. I was scared, though, because we were talking and you were like, oh, what part are you up to? And I said, oh, I was up to this part or whatever. And you were just like, hmm, have certain things occurred yet? And I was so scared. You scared me. <laughs> well, now look how the tables turn because normally you're the one that's ahead in the book and you're, you know, giving me hints and <laughs> kind of – trying to throw me a bone and trying to stray me away from what's happening, but now I get to do it to you for once. Yeah. And well, now it I'm was fun. read everything else. We'll just wait till we get into next year because I'm ahead. 
<laughs> yeah, you're way ahead. <laughs> but that's okay. Alrighty, I suppose we shall kick on with the plot. So pretty much as that blurb stated, yeah, Sierra, as a teenage, you know, dramatic bullshit, she's living two lives. She has spends a whole year in, like, Oregon, I guess, and she spends her time one one month, like four weeks. One month, I know. Uh, a year selling Christmas trees on their family Christmas tree plot. I thought it would that be that they go for summer. And so I was like, oh, yeah, they probably go for three months. And I was like, oh, that's more realistic. But then it turns out it's a one month. And I was like, how is this an issue? <laughs> yeah, I know. But I guess it's just a matter of she wants to spend, like, a Christmas with her. But that's what I'm saying. Like, would it not be more dream- would it not be more dramatic if it was three months? Because otherwise you're spending, yeah, 11 months out of the year with these friends in Oregon. And it's like, oh, no, I don't get to spend Christmas with them, which probably sucks. But also, like, it would make more sense if it was, uh, yeah, they were in California for a longer amount of time. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. But no, it's just a month. Again, just, but a month is, like, a super long time, I guess, for her. I guess when, yeah, you're a teenager. Again, all these big things are just menial. And so one of the main issues in regards to the plot, of course, is there's a lot of moments where Sierra is talking to her parents and they're discussing whether or not they're coming back the next year because they are not making any money. They are barely breaking even. And so there's a lot of conversations and tense Just on that one lot, they're making money shipping out their trees to like wholesalers, but on their plot in California, yeah, they're not breaking even. Yeah, yeah. So they're wondering if it's even worth it to come back and, and do it despite almost having like a 30 year reign there but another funny thing that i I probably saw in throughout the book which you would have probably seen as well is like sierra is giving discounts willy-nilly and it's like that's why you're not making any money yeah (laughs) yeah but i mean probably not that great of a discount but i know but like it's a make or break year and she's really conscious about wanting to come back next year and also like a big theme from like before she left and then when she gets there with heather is that she needs to have like a fling yeah a Christmas one a month Christmas fling. fling. Yes, but her. Get out of it! You're gonna end up soaked. Get out of it! Thank you. She's soaked already. Um, yeah, so big thing get a boyfriend, have a summer fling or whatever. Like, but um, anyone that works for her dad, her dad, like, scares them off and makes them clean the toilets. Yep. <laughs> That's funny, though. If they, like, yeah, if they show an interest. In Sierra. That's overprotective. And that's overprotective, yes. And then the one boy that, like, did ask her out, she's just not interested in. And he turned out to be, like, a bit of a bum hole anyway. Yeah. Uh, I have to put the cat in timeout. Yeah, and the guy in question is named Andrew, which Andrew. makes sense. Yes. <laughs> if it's if it's the type. Uh, yeah, and he tries to, like, make a bit of trouble when um, Sierra does hang out with Caleb. He always makes an effort to try and kind of... A snitch on her to her father to try and get into some sort of good books even though Sierra doesn't want him it's a weird sort of dynamic in that aspect but he was always out to be a prick and while Heather is encouraging Sierra to have a fling she there's a little plot line for her she ha- has a boyfriend named Devin and the way she describes him he's completely hopeless he doesn't listen he only talks about boring stuff and she's in two minds as to whether or not to dump him like before Thanksgiving or even Christmas or like afterwards through all the celebrations and stuff which I don't know like it's like if you really if you complain that much just dump him but like then he's doing little things that like keep her I had a boyfriend in high school and it's like I wanted to dump him or whatever and it's like you knew not to dump them like around exam season and stuff (laughs) I mean, that is very considerate, but like, if yeah, it gets to like a you point, hold out. but like, you just you got you got to do what feels right. Like, you just got to cut the cord, you know. But then, like, they end up staying together anyway. Yeah, I think what was it? I think until New Year's, he's extended that period. Yeah, but then even more so because remember she gets jealous when the Snow Queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Asks yeah. for his number, which like bold move to ask for his number in front of like his girlfriend. I know. Uh, I suppose and people it's, do like, that. And like they all go to school, so it's like I I would assume that they know that they're dating. He has a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah they're dating. Yeah, look, I don't know. Is is that not a good foundation for a relationship? You know, string them along until for events and then, you know, oh, um, I'll extend this subscription. Yeah. <laughs> when he gets to be a good present. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. It's pretty selfish and, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, it was, a, it was a funny little plot line because it's like, will they or won't they break up? And 
I suppose something else had to be going on instead of Sierra and Caleb, you know, lovey-dovey. And just back to, like, Sierra's dad real quick, um, him being overprotective of her, because it's ironic, because uh, Sierra's mum and dad met on a, on the Christmas tree lot farm. You know, he was working and she was working there as well. So, like, and they yeah, were and, and so they the worked whole out thing fine. Is like, yeah, the whole thing is like, we don't want you to get your heart broken. And it's like, yeah, but you guys did the exact same thing. Like, <laughs> But I suppose they had the consecutive years of going back every year and working, whereas this has had a bit more of an uncertainty as to whether or not mm. they're coming back. But that's back. on them. They chose to. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a lot of discourse around, yeah, because they had tough conversations about Sierra and, or with Sierra, Sierra about Caleb and, you know, oh, we just don't want you to get your heart broken. We just don't want to get your hopes up, blah, blah, blah. But like, she's a kid, let her, or teenager, let her, you know, work through the heartbreak and live yeah. through it. Well, like, also, like, I understand that, like, they were still on the fence about what decision they were going to make for the next year but it's like even if you're thinking about oh we're thinking about not coming back like let her know that so that she has that like oh I can't make a connection because I might not come back yeah but even then yeah even when Sierra was kind of uh, we say dating or hanging out um with Caleb like yeah she was still in two minds because yeah she doesn't know if she wanted to commit yeah and all that type of stuff but yeah the the parents are acting like heartbreak is the absolute worst thing in the world and like your first heartbreak sure is but like you, like you, you get up and move on, you know. So to get from to Oregon from California or vice versa, it's a ten-hour drive, mm-hmm. or it's a two-hour flight. Yeah, not even an hour and a half. There's also a train trip. Yeah, so I mean that's going to Melbourne. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's not that far away. Again, like it's yeah. it's a million I miles feel away. Like, yeah, America like makes a lot of American classic literature (laughs) and movies always make such a big deal about like going to different states for college and stuff or whatever or just being in different states and it's like america yes is big but they have so many states that it's not like us trying to date someone from queensland you know it's like oh it's a five hour flight or whatever yeah it's like it's an hour and a half flight yeah look again in the big wide world of a 15 year old it's it's forever <laughs> and plus they probably just don't have the funds to willingly go back and forth you know or drive or even drive oh yeah i just thought of something but we'll get back to that towards the end if i remember because it's an interesting just say thought. It now. <laughs> oh well because at the end uh the, her, sierra's parents gave her a truck and it's oh it's only to be used around the farm where's their farm california no they have two. Oh right sorry <laughs> Oh, oh, so they and they they just, have the one in Oregon yeah, and the one in California. Sorry, bro. Yeah. Oh, I'm an idiot. I was just thinking they just had the farm. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Um, but yeah, good luck getting. It sounds like a like a deadbeat car. Good luck driving it for ten hours. I just imagine the um truck that Bella Swan got. Oh yeah, Twilight. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> We're lucky to make the trip, to be honest. Mm. Mm-hmm. But that's their problem. We're never going to have to know what happens with that, I guess. Mm. But anyway, so Caleb comes and buys a tree or whatever, and Sierra immediately makes a googly eyes at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Emily's mom is okay. she, she asked if I wanted lunch. I'm like, no, thank you. Oh. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's love at first sight. Of course, <laughs> it has to be. It's Chris. It's a yeah. Christmas miracle. Yeah, and then she's like, oh, he has these dimples or whatever. And then she's talking to Heather about it later because she's like, oh, my God, like, I did see a guy that I might be interested in. And Heather's just like, oh, my God, like, explain him to me. Because that's how all best friends in these types of short books have to act. Give me every detail. It's like, I just laid eyes on him. all the details. Yeah, calm down. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Anyway, and then... What's her name? Yeah, Sierra. He's like, oh, well, he had these dimples. And she's like, it's Caleb. And then she's a bit like the only guy with dimples. Yeah, I was just going to say, he must be the only guy with dimples. Yeah, but then he's she's a little bit cagey about it. I'm like, what's that all about? And then she goes on to reveal a rumour. A rumour that he attacked his sister with a knife. Jay Asher, how dare you add this tragic backstory <laughs> into this but innocent also, book? Like, who hasn't been there? <laughs> I mean... Is this just... Is this an, just a... Uh, is this not a um, a common occurrence in people's childhoods that their brothers come after them and dies? No? And, oh, and almost me? kill their okay. sisters? <laughs> just me? Okay. 
<laughs> I mean, I know, I, I think growing up, like, my brother has been, like, aggressive towards me at times, but, like, you know, like, that's teenage hoodwinkery. No, it's okay. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I can't, I don't think I've ever had my, because they say, because I see, you see posts on social media all the time, like, even kind of what you just said, like, oh, who hasn't had a sibling chase them around with a knife or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, I, I personally haven't, but yeah. Um, I understand that type of vibe, though. Well, good for you. <laughs> it must be nice. <laughs> Are you happy and healthy? Uh, relatively. <laughs> Just checking. Okay. And how are you, Kenzie? You know, I'm fine. Oh, I know what that means. I told you, my brain is fully developed. <laughs> I, my, my, ho- my homa, my trauma is healed. Of course. And, and don't they say, like, you regenerate new skin every seven years? So new skin at some point. Ugh. Fresh skin. Yeah. Uh-huh. No more trauma. You're, you're cured. Oh. No no depression. Nothing. Hallelujah. Oh my god, I can feel colours. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, circling back. Because <laughs> I have to be the circle back person. So yeah, Heather reveals this rumour and Sierra is quite shocked because of course she is. Can we also talk about, sorry, like the level of shock? Yeah. Like, it's a bit dramatic. It is a bit dramatic. <laughs> like, like, is his sister dead? No. But she is, conveniently, doesn't live with them anymore. Yeah, that's all right. So that gives the impression that, like, you know, she was sent away well, for her safety. Scared. Yeah, yeah. But we know the proper reason. Well, he's not in juvie. No, no, he no. He was never charged. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, yeah. come on. But, okay, so for full on... Ooh, I keep accidentally hitting Emily's computer. Um, for full on context, Caleb explains that his parents got divorced for some unknown reason. I thought we we're going to find a bit of a deeper meaning in that, but apparently not. And his mother got sick. And so they were kind of living, Abby, Caleb's sister was living with her. And then Abby was realizing, oh, well, dad's sad and alone and depressed and stuff because yeah. no one's living with him. And they used to celebrate Christmas hardcore, but now they don't anymore because they're both separated. Yeah. And so Abby wants to go live with the father and, or no, she keep, well, she does want to live with him, but at the same time while living with Caleb and, and her mum, she would like tell Caleb it's, this is his fault that they've like fall, fallen yeah, apart. Yeah, that dad's falling apart, yeah. Yeah, because he's trying to uh, prioritise his mother because she's yeah sick and unwell i'm not really sure to what extent was it like i don't know if it was like a cancer thing or anything or if it's just just sickness i don't know yeah i don't really remember that part but yeah um so abby is like bullying and harassing caleb being oh this is all your fault they're, they're both miserable you tore our family apart blah 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 blah. and so one day she's doing it when they were younger and then he just blew up and so he's took all that frustration and he chased her with a knife to her room and he stabbed like the door several times the door but that's just because of all the pressure. Yeah, Abby was putting him under, and he's a like, you don't, you never blame children for like, yeah, divorce or anything. Let alone your siblings blaming you for the misery that's caused. And so yeah, so in that context, understandable reaction to being constantly bullied and harassed and being told that yeah. you're the reason why our lives are ruined. Yeah, but from an outside perspective, from yeah, and uh, his best friend Jeremiah was there to witness it, and so. Then, oh, yeah. then he told his family, and then his family is what and spread then it. And his mum, yeah, just spread it. And, of course, like, the rumour meal, it got extended into something that it's not. Yes, yeah, kind of like, yeah, Chinese whispers as well. And um, and so, yeah, from, like, an outsider looking in, just hearing the rumour, you think, oh, well, Abby doesn't live there anymore, so she must have, you know, gotten hurt in a way or was taken away unwillingly, etc., etc. You know, those types of things, like putting it in a safe environment. Once again... In a lot of books that we read, there's no communication. There is no communication. If someone had just asked Caleb's mum, hey, what happened? why does your daughter not live with you? Yeah. I, honestly, yeah, I, that thought has not occurred to me until this moment. Like, why is no one <laughs> asking the mum what happened? The mum, yeah. But maybe maybe mum wasn't home and so she wasn't really sure what happened. Because it was in one of those moments where it's like, oh, he said, she said. Mm, but I don't think Abby was sent, like, to live with her dad because of that. I think Abby no, no, was no, just no. like, well, I'm going to go live with dad. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Someone should have asked her mum, oh, did Abby go because she's scared? Yeah. When it could have just been like, well, no. And then also because they're saying that, like, they have, like, on and off Christmases. Yeah. So one year they're with their dad, one the year they're with their mum. So it's like, okay, well, you've seen Caleb go to his dad's and you've seen Abby come home for Christmas as well. Like, like it should be fine. Yeah, assume all is well. Yeah. You know what? Let's just talk about, like, just the Caleb, yeah, the incident. Because, yeah, my qualm is that the community sentiment towards him is very hateful and, like, disgusting towards him. 
And it's like, he made one mistake as a child. And as you said, yeah. he hasn't ended up being a violent person. He's never gone to like juvie. He's never been a fucking delinquent. He just made one mistake, you know, under duress. And they're holding it over him for the rest of his life. And it's not fair. It is absolutely not fair. Because people I mean, change. Yeah, t- he's a teenager. Yeah, yeah. If anything, now is the time to be like hurting people and being a bully and stuff. But he's not. Yeah, and then he's gone to church. He's giving Christmas trees to people who can't afford them. Like, he's buying them. Yeah, with his own money. And they're still like, no, you're evil. I think, yeah, Sierra was talking to her. Because Sierra's trying to convince her dad that, like, Caleb's okay and he's fine and he's not going to hurt her and all that type of stuff. But then the dad's like, but he has a past. One incident. Oh, my I God. I know. And then also because Andy. I'm going to yeah. call him Andy. <laughs> oh, no. Andy. Um spoke to the dad or whatever and again like andy you go to school with caleb have you ever seen caleb like punch someone or attack someone at school in these past years no you haven't so why is it like again this one incident yeah look uh you can never do a foot wrong in this community otherwise yeah we held against you for the rest of your life (laughs) yeah because i was waiting for either either it's gonna go because, you, do, yeah, it's, it takes a while to be revealed what actually happened. And I was like, it's going to go one of two ways. It's going to go that, like, he hurts Sierra accidentally or that it, like, wasn't even him or something and he was covering for someone. That's how I thought it was going to go or something. Like, he was covering for his dad or something. Yeah, I thought it was just going to be either the rumour was true and that Abby just got sent away for her safety or, like, or it, it was, like, just misconstrued. It was, like, a, a misunderstanding or if it was, yeah, he just did what he did, and which isn't even that bad considering the other options. But yeah, damn, you can't put set a foot wrong in this community, I swear. And then, so yeah, his best friend Jeremiah tells his parents, because it's a traumatic incident to probably witness as well, because you're not expecting your friend to blow up and be able to be capable of something like that. And so Jeremiah's parents um, forbids him to become friends with him, and Jeremiah's sister is a bit of a bitch about it, you know, watching him making sure he doesn't interact with Caleb ever again so yeah now that that's kind of out there I think even Sierra and Caleb have a conversation because there are moments where Caleb knows that Sierra wants to ask questions about the situation as to whether or not it's true or not and then he kind of gets a bit upset because uh she didn't ask him directly like she had to hear the rumor first before asking him anything which is fair enough yeah but would they again like they wouldn't have even started talking or like dating if it weren't for the rumor yeah oh yeah that's very fair and true yeah because sierra yeah gives off the vibe that she yeah wants to see the good in people first and but and it's also just like the christmas spirit vibes like everyone's just like you, you're nice or cordial to each other you know so she's trying to see the best in, in everybody and christmas is about forgiveness uh, uh, yeah mistakes are and forgiven love. and love yep <laughs> Oh, I forgot to say in the beginning though, but it just occurred to me like every time I, any time I had a, like a reading session of this book, all I could think about was Christmas Tree Farm by Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such a vibe. So yeah, so the rumor Sierra just being in two minds about Caleb throughout this little relationship stint, what drives the the plot forward and stuff. So Sierra learns that yeah, Caleb is delivering Christmas trees to people in need. And he's buying them with his own money. And Sierra, upon liking him a bit more, will give him discounts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is why you're not coming back next year. Jesus. Um, it was also established as well that they've been coming for a few years or whatever. Um, but Sierra and Heather planted a tree every year up in the hills. Almost starting their own little cute little plot, which is yeah, adorable. Yeah, starting, starting their own Christmas tree plot. But what's the end? She takes Caleb up there, which is cute. I was like, well, that had to happen. Like, that's a cute moment. Anyway, um, but they see that because there's meant to be six, but there's only five, and then someone's cut down the sixth one, but then kind of just, like, abandoned it. Yeah. And then I thought that that was going to be a bit more of a plot. Like, I thought it was going to be, like, turn out to be Andy or yeah. someone being like, this is because you're with Caleb or whatever. And like you don't like you. me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, and then nothing came of it, yeah. They just like, I think they just finished it. Did did they take it somewhere or, I forget. Um, I think Caleb. No, they just left it. But then Caleb like got her a cutting from it or something. Oh yeah yeah yeah, because yeah, it was the first one they ever built, and I think Sierra's dream was to always have that be a gift from her to somebody, and it was that special. Mm. But then mm. now she felt feels kind of violated that someone else has like 
cut it down before her, which would have been pr- a bit premature. Mm. But yeah, which yeah, I would be very upset. But yeah, I thought, oh, this is gonna be a, a good dramatic moment. Who's gonna do it? Are we gonna find out? But then it's like yeah. we're eighty, we're like eighty percent of the way through the book. Like, what's gonna happen? And then yeah, okay, but then it's just like, oh, it's nothing. It's like okay, well then why'd you do that? Yeah, <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> I think there must have been some sort of like uh, comparison or parallel in there between the cutting of that tree and perhaps the perception of Caleb as well. I don't know. There's some sort of metaphor in there somewhere. Well, I thought maybe they were going to go up there to have sex. And so it like, yeah, metaphor is that's her virginity. Oh. Ooh. Come on, read oh, into it. That would have been interesting though. <laughs> yeah. Give me back my girlhood. It was mine first. It was my first. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's just because with every other book series that we read or like just book you need to read into things so i was just like okay (laughs) yeah nah i just thought like yeah it was just andrew being a dickhead but and so yeah sierra and caleb's relationship blossoms a bit they have moments where they're going into the grocery store and they have an encounter with jeremiah and his family and of course they pop off at caleb for being a violent person and of course untrustworthy He'll hurt you, blah, blah, blah. He's unpredictable, reckless. You've got your heart broken. Yeah, more heartbreaking bullshit. And then Sierra just sticks up to to him. Stick, sticks, uh, yeah, sticks up for him. So up for him, yeah. Yeah, um, and kind of bites back. She's like, oh, you don't know the real Caleb. And then that Jeremiah's like, well, you don't, which is fair enough. Like, she's, yeah. she's fighting his battles, and I don't... Yeah. I mean, it's always nice to have someone kind of, like, new in your life who is, kind of knows your story and is willing to... Uh, defend you and all that but does she really need to be the one to fight his battles for him yeah also when there were so many times when like she was talking to her parents or whatever and they're like oh we just don't get your heart broken blah 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 and then she's like you don't know who he is and it's like okay you sit in your trailer every night and you have dinner with them tell them like it took so long i was like (gasps) it's giving it's not my story to tell but like he's your borderline boyfriend (laughs) You know how many times I've told someone, like, oh, I won't tell anyone. And I, I tell you, I tell my mum, I tell Luke. Like, <laughs> But who does your mum tell and who is Luke going to tell? <laughs> exactly, but, like, this is what I'm saying. Yeah, like, someone yeah, can yeah. be like, oh, it's not my story. And it's like, yeah, but, like, sometimes context. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah, otherwise this is how you get, like, the rumours and the misconstruing of what's happened and all that type of stuff. So, yeah, and another – so, yeah, they have a bit of a blow-up. That's fine. Jeremiah's still kind of barred from being friends with Caleb. So Caleb decides to take Sierra on a couple of Christmas delivery tree runs, which is cute, date night. And mind you, Sierra is actually pretty busy trying to manage the lot, so she's trying to, like, uh, not sneak off, but kind of manage her time where she can go out and experience this magic. Yeah. And so they deliver to a couple of families, and then there's one family in particular that seems incredibly ungrateful. But um, <laughs> then there's this quote from the book. Oh, I can't remember it and I don't think I highlighted it, but it was just a matter of them. Cu- it's coming down to them having a bad day and just taking it out on them. And it's like, I don't know, I get it, but also they're kids. Like, stop yelling at the children for bringing you a Christmas tree. Yeah, they're just trying to do a good deed. And Caleb tells Sierra that the reason he find- how he fa- finds these people is because he asks, because they attend the food bank and all that type of stuff oh, yeah, which i think is just or even church yeah it's just like is that yeah. not a breach of confidentiality <laughs> but in the name of doing a good deed oh, what's what's the moral what's the more ethical yeah. and, then, and then yeah because also like one of the kids like he goes to school with so it's like i'd be embarrassed yeah i don't know at the end of the day it's christmas it's a good deed who cares at <laughs> the end of the day they're white christians yeah for sure <laughs> it was very surprising when Caleb revealed that he yet yeah, goes to church and stuff like that. So I'm thinking, is this to save face from the rumor <laughs> that he's a good, good little Christian boy? Yeah. Um, and like I, I did enjoy it because I am not getting into religion right now. But yeah, I have thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> of course um, you do. But I liked that they had um that like little conversation of like Sierra's like, oh, like are you a believer? And then he's like, yeah, like blah blah. And I think she said that she wasn't. Yeah, I don't quite remember. Yeah, and I was just like, rep. Also, do not, of course you do me, because I am baptised. I went to Sunday school. Like, I grew up on church, yo. Yeah, look at you now. Yeah. The the devil loves you. Yes, it is not my fault. I'm just sexy. But yeah, then they talk about, with the church stuff as well, they have like, uh, 
like a Christmas, uh, you know, what we just, what we call it, gathering or uh, event, um, like a choir. Was it like a choir or carols? I forget. But it was just like a, a nice little event that um, they went to midnight mass. Yes, that's it. Yeah, I was which sure. is like I wasn't sure what to call it. I'm sorry. It's a thing. It's yeah, a I big thing. I, I'm sure it's a thing, but like I'm not. I don't do that. So I, well, how would I know? <laughs> anyway, but yeah. So Caleb takes Sierra along to that, which is very cute because it's another like date night situation. Date night at church. Yeah, love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also just with Caleb's like the rumor and everything. Caleb reveals that Abby had like forgiven him for that, and like no one else knows that. But the family, or well, probably not even his mum. <laughs> I'm just going to assume. Yeah. I mean, also, like, yeah, they shouldn't have to tell everyone so their business. It's like, oh, Abby but, forgives me, you all should too. Yeah, but also, like, well, like, let someone know what's happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. Probably it's hard to rally around when the town is already against you. You just accept it. And you just, like, let them think what they want. But I know who I am and I know what I do. And I know deep in my heart that I'm, yeah, not a monster or will not hurt anyone kind of ever, like, again. So I suppose, yeah, it just comes down to the um, security in himself and knowing who he is. Yeah. But, like, having the whole a whole town be like, you're a monster, like, surely that wears you down a bit. Yeah, and uh, for what? Yeah. Do, what, you know? Yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, for why? For what? You did these? For why? <laughs> Um, and then there was a moment where uh, Sierra and Caleb and Heather and Devin have a have a double date, which is cute. Main, mainly it's just so Devin can talk to Caleb and Abby can, doesn't have to listen to his uh, boring ramblings, I guess. Yes. <laughs> about his family, about his fantasy football team and all that. And I think there's a conversation and I think Caleb brings up one of his classmates or even Heather brings up a classmate in a long distance relationship. And then Sierra makes a comment about it, about whether or not it'll ever last. And obviously yeah. that hurts Caleb's feelings because he thinks that, like, you know, they might, even if Sierra doesn't come back, that might, could potentially try a long distance. And so he got really upset, which is fair enough about how, um... I'm going to show you, hang on. My I'm screen is, share this my, sc- my screen is fuzzy. I don't think I'm ever going to see it. This is yeah. California. Yeah. Oh, no. And this is Oregon. Yep. Pretty much <laughs> almost like a straight line. Almost. It's like a straight line, yeah. Ten hours. Jesus Christ. And, like, that's on a straight road, baby. Yeah. But question. They said because of Rachel incident that's going to come up, there's a train. Is there a train option? Yeah, there's a train. Hang on. On this, go- train. On this Google Maps. And how long? I think the train takes, like, 12 hours. Excuse me. Train? Well, hang on. Yeah, it's okay. California. The Great Oregon Trail. <laughs> oh, that's a definite straight line. Hello. Yeah. All I'm seeing is flights. Flights. Those are flights. There's oh, a train. A train. Twenty nine oh. hours. That doesn't seem Bloody right. Bloody hell, no. Maybe she was. Yeah. Maybe they just like had artistic license. Perhaps. Yeah. Because this is a good segue though, because there is another dramatic incident yeah. involving Sierra and her friends from back home, Rachel and so Elizabeth. So dramatic. Yes. So Rachel, she is like a stage production person in like at their school theatre program or just production She's a program. theatre kid. Theatre kid. And, but her dream is to be an actress. And so she calls up Sierra. She's like, I got the part of, I think, what are they doing? The Night Before Christmas or something? And so she is like the ghost of yeah. Christmas past or whatever. It's a line. It's a, <laughs> role a that, Christmas carol. Oh, Christmas carol. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. And so she has a part that is... Uh, doesn't have any lines so like it doesn't have any lines (laughs) and then rachel is like you have to come to my first like performance yeah and she's like get on a train like and just she says 12 hours yeah which like she's like just come for 12 hours and then go back yeah which but a flight would have been quicker apparently a flight's an hour and a half (laughs) so she could have made it yeah um that's not the point okay okay claire I have yes. a question for you. Oh, oh no. <laughs> if that was me, yeah. if I was like, oh my God, I have a part and there's no lines and you were an hour and a half flight away, <laughs> would you come and see my play? Yes. Oh. You know how I feel about travelling around? Like, I don't care. Well, you're a better friend than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't do that to me. <laughs> if I was like in that situation, like I'm with my family, we specifically come each year for this I mean, and then yeah, yeah like i'm going to go and meet my boyfriend's family like if i didn't have plans sure yeah yeah yeah. 
I mean, but also, like, I guess they could have changed the dinner. Probably. Or is there multiple performances? Could she have come a different night? No, I think it's, like, one night only, maybe. Oh, my God. I remember our school productions were, like, three nights, maybe four yeah, nights. Yeah, we had three. We had three. We, oh, sorry. We would have three public nights. And then during the week, like, t- tech week. We, we No, we would have tech week. And then we would have, like, two performances for, like, the school. And then, yeah, we would have three public performances. But, yeah, considering the context and... Sierra is busy as fuck with the lot, but also, yeah, it comes down to her yeah. best friend. And or it's her like, boyfriend. yeah, there's a difference on like having plans in the same, like, and being near the plot, like in the same town as like her work. Whereas, like, because her parents could just be like, hey, like, it's really busy. We need you to come back early or whatever. Whereas, yeah, like, if you're in another state, you're like, well, if I need to jump like a plane right now, like. But again, I think this is just added to add that menial teenage drama. Yeah, of course. And But it's very short-lived, although Rachel is grumpy about it. They do kind of, in a way, make up and they com- they contact each other and they communicate again. Because Sierra is wanting to help um, kind of have like a Christmas miracle in order to kind of keep Caleb because she's deciding she wants to kind of commit to this and be in a full-on proper relationship with him. And then it is revealed later that Rachel had sent formal tickets or tickets to their winter formal or something. No, because she... Like, when her friends forgive her again... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're like, oh, like, how can we help you or whatever? And she's like, I need a Christmas miracle. And so they send the the tree thing. Oh, and then they send thing. her the, the winter formal tickets as well. But she specifically asked for the clipping anyway. Yeah, but then because she also... I think because she's like, I, like, I just need a miracle. Because I think she was like... Oh, like, it, was, I, it was just a spoken thing. Like, I need yeah, a miracle. Yeah, I want the... No, she asked her friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. Okay, yeah. So I'm th- saying as part of that, they were like, okay, well, we're going to send you these tickets because that's your miracle. Like, we believe in that it, you're going to stay together. And the miracle was that, yeah, like, they'd be strong enough to stay together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Were you expecting, like, that as the miracle? I was expecting something different. I don't know what I was expecting I was them expecting. to buy a plane ticket or something. Ooh, like, yeah. I was like, okay, well, if you're going to do that, like, at least make it fucking worth it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh my god, this website. Sorry. (laughs) And segueing to the family dinner, because that was a fun experience. Oh yes, with Abby and mummy. Yeah, so we meet Abby for the first time, and she seems, she's very cheerful, she's very different to how, like, you would perceive her as someone who had been attacked with a knife at a young age. She's traumatised. She's at the age where, the age that Caleb was, I think, when it happened, no? I don't know, she's younger, significantly younger, I don't know. There was some sort of, like comment about that from sierra's perspective anyway i thought she well she was she was a freshman and they were i guess they'd be juniors so they were two years older than her oh yeah so she would be like his age when he attacked her or whatever yeah but yeah anyway family dinner's fun sierra's getting along with abby just fine like yeah i thought you know she's asking questions answering questions and i think and caleb just seemed really off the entire time and i I forget why, but it was significant because they have a conversation about it later. Um, I think it's just because I think talking about having like a connected family or something like that, and she has to spend yeah. time with them together because all Kale's family ever wants is to kind of get yeah, have a sort of normalcy again. So yeah. he's probably a little bit not jealous or kind of grieving what they could have had. And I think yeah, yeah, that sort of. So yeah, but like. I, with every incident so far, either if Sierra gets upset or Caleb gets upset, they talk it out, which is very mature for 16-year-olds. But I guess how else is the plot going to get resolved? <laughs> so, yeah, that was fun. But, yeah, Abby seemed completely, yeah, different than what we'd expect because, yeah, just the nature of the uh, the rumours and whatever. We expect her to be... But, again, Caleb said she forgave him, so I suppose you just go on it. Life is normal. Sierra has, yeah, conversations again with her parents later on more about Andrew because his her dad's very still weary about Caleb and she has a little blow up with Andrew as well about um, yes spreading rumors or like not knowing anybody again Sierra is fighting Caleb's battles battles although she's kind of I guess she's kind of defending her kind of relationship relationship and also and I guess like I yeah understand like the whole premise of like oh you gotta let someone fight their own battles but it's like well he's not doing it like yeah, you got these other these the other people are the perpetrators who are causing issues yeah. for no reason. Caleb's just out here doing his thing, trying to be a good boy and not, yeah. ca- not cause any trouble. 
But yeah. Yeah, and I thought Andrew was gonna do something stupid like maybe hurt Caleb or, or yeah, yeah I thought he would have cut down the Christmas tree out of spite, but no he was... I thought yeah, I really thought he was the Christmas tree. Mm. But he quit at some point. Oh, did he? Yeah, he quit the farm at some point. Did he quit or did Sierra's dad tell him to fuck off? I feel like he quit after the blow up because I think the dad witnessed it. So then he's like, or maybe like it'd be more awkward situation. So yeah, I guess, yeah, Caleb and Sierra are having a fun relationship. Like they end up smooching in the in the truck a few times and all that type of stuff. And then, yeah, they go up to the, to the plot with the trees and yeah, hang out, have a bit of fun. Christmas comes around, everyone's handing out gifts. It's a good time. Caleb's still getting trees to people. And he has a present for her as well, which, um, because her, Sierra and Heather have always wanted to decorate their little tree plot with lights and stuff, but I forget why they were never really able to. So Caleb took it upon himself to go up there and set, make it all look pretty with all these, like, Christmas lights, and then they go up there and it's a fun time. It's cute. Yes, and that's when they, like, decide, like, okay, well, we're going to try and make this work. Because they, like, kind of not have a fight, but he's just like... I don't want you to give up on us. And she's just like, I don't know how this is going to work. Yeah, and she's admitted and then, that she's in love with him and all that type of stuff and they love each yeah. other. Yeah, and then so, yeah, she goes back to the trailer and then she sees the lights and she's like, oh my god, I have to go to him. And then that's yeah. when she's like, here's the tickets. Yeah, and then it's kind of yeah. the end. Yeah. So, quick qualm. It's a short book, I know. It could have been probably just another 100 pages just to answer this yeah. question. Do they ever end up going to prom? I or wish formal. there was a little epilogue. Yeah. Like, and like, it was like six months later or something or like a year later and she's back. Like, And even if her family's not there, she's like, well, I'm still going to come and visit for the month anyway. Yeah. Because like, yeah, that's the thing. Like what's stopping her from going and visiting? Sorry, who is that what you were going to say? <laughs> or even her, like when she's a bit older, like independently runs the plot. Yeah. Like what's so significant about missing out on like a couple of years if you're just yeah. going to potentially come back? But yeah, and does the long distance ever work out? We, d- we don't know. But I, but in a way, you kind of, you're just left with that happiness that they're together and they're happy and they love each other. Christmas wins, you know. But yeah, I just, the, just, I just need to know if they do follow through and all that type of stuff. But no, it's cute. And then, yeah, she's reunited with um, Rachel and Elizabeth and stuff. Like, they all talk again. Um, and yeah, Sierra gives Caleb the, the tree cutting for as a present, which is cute. And yeah, all happy days. Chris Again, Christmas wins. Christmas spirit. The spirit of love. And friendship. <laughs> and friendship. <laughs> all love wins in the end. I wish there was more. Yeah, it could have been and I, I'm, bigger. Yeah. I'm glad that it was what it was. But I wish, yeah, I wish there was a little bit more. It's a fun, yeah, fun little YA. And How like, you going? yeah. Like a like a Hallmark Christmas movie into a book. Like, everything all works out. Sometimes plot points don't make sense or they come a little bit unresolved, but you don't care about that. Yeah. You, okay. you, you oversee it for the for yeah. just for two characters in love, I guess. No last lingering thoughts, feelings, emotions? I'm content. I'm content. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Feel free to listen for the next couple of weeks as we continue on our little Christmas specials. Again, as we've highlighted in last week's episode, uh, we will be discussing Dash and Lily next week, and which is mm-hmm. also, again, a Netflix movie or TV series. I'm not sure which one it is. Dash and Lily. Yeah, it's a Netflix movie. But yeah, we'll be reading the book, and if I have enough time, I'll try and smash out the movie too. Yeah. And then the week after that, we will have Let It Snow by John Green and Co. Because once again, oh, yes. no, I don't know who the other authors are. <laughs> I haven't looked it up either. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but next year, oh, I'm so excited for next year. I can't stop thinking about it. All the books I know got the up. lineup is insane. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy girls. Yes, crazy girl. <laughs> so yeah, keep an ear out for Dash and Lily next year. Um, next year, next week. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> next Christmas. My, my heart is already re- I'm I'm checked out. I'm ready for next year. <laughs> um but yeah, keep an ear out. Um link in the bio, in the Instagram bio. Mm-hmm. Find link us in one tree. place. You'll find us everywhere. Find us in all the places. Absolutely. Happy Happy Turkey Day! Oh yeah, happy whatever. <laughs> We're recording but, this on Thanksgiving. Is it actually? Oh. Yeah, yeah. So as it twenty fourth it... or twenty fifth of November is Thanksgiving. Ah, oh, okay. Yep, yep. Happy Turkey Day. But this is going to be released in a couple of weeks. So. I oh, know. I'm just saying that. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, Happy Turkey Day to all the <laughs> Americans. To the Americans. Sorry, I don't yeah. know. Shout out to all the Americans. Yeah. 
hope you have a good day and yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Hope you're thankful. Very thankful. Yep. I'm thankful I don't live there. <laughs> <laughs> Lo- lucky same, lucky same. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay, that's all. Before we cancel ourselves, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Thank <laughs> you.